Hey, what's good, you guys? It's your boy, Jay Freshman. Today, we're going to go over game staging. And this is probably the most important topic for any producer out there. Like before you even begin your mix, this has to be properly set or you're just not going to really get the best mix out of your DAW. So what game staging is in the simplest way is just a healthy signal flow throughout your whole process of your production, meaning that you're not clipping in any of the signal flows. And in FL Studio, there's about four signal flows. In most videos they that talk about gain staging, they say it's three and they automatically just go to the channel rack. But I want to also say that it's also your plugin. Like if you've been watching my tutorials, you always hear me be like, damn, OmniSpirit um, sounds be coming in so loud because they really do be coming in like super loud. And many of you guys know what I'm talking about. So instead of t actually turning it down from right here, you want to turn it down from over here. Because ain't no sense yet. Yeah, these are initially both kind of the same knobs. They work hand to hand in a sense. But I'm not going to like be mixing my levels at this low of a volume. Like, come on, G. If you have to have your volume this low, just turn it down from your plugin. Like, let's just get that simple. You don't want it to clip in the plugin. You don't want to clip in the channel rack. You don't want to clip in the effects. And you definitely don't want to clip in the mixer. And you definitely don't want to clip, clip in the master bus, which is part of the mixer. So... I'm going to show you this beat. Just pay attention to the signal flow. You see this sound coming in. It's not loud. Look at the rest of the signal flows. None of these are clipping. And this is coming from the channel rack. None of these sounds are clipping. Then you have your masters hitting around six. So I know a lot of people talk about, hey, should I have my masters only hit at this certain number? It really doesn't matter as long as it's not too high. Like, let's just have common sense. Like, why would I want to have my sounds and my master of my mix reach all the way to like negative three? Then when it comes to mastering, I have no kind of room to put any other effects or, you know, master properly because the headroom is so small. You want as much headroom as you can. But obviously, like I said, why would you want to mix so low too? Why would I want to have all my sounds at like 21 in the master? I could barely hear that. You know, people, they do have it at like 15 and all the way up to negative six. I like to have mine all the way to negative six, negative six, because that's a good headroom for me. So just find the one that is good for you. But like I said, it's not necessary to be going all the way down to 24 or going all the way high to like negative three. Let's stop with all that. I'm going to show you what it is without when you're leveling. So that was level. As you can see, it was not clipping in a master. Now pay attention again. All right, prepare yourself. This may be loud. Once again, my signal flow from my channel rack is healthy. I'm not clipping. But the sounds are so loud, it's not even level. It's not clipping, though. So I will level it here so that it won't clip in my mixer signal flow or master signal flow. However you look at it, like I said, there's four signal flows, whereas... You know, your plug-in, then the channel rack, then the effects that you use, and then a mixer going into your master. For the most part, you know, you don't have to worry about turning it down in your plug-in. But just in case, you know, if it's too loud, turn it down. Like most of the times when I'm in OmniSpirit, I have to turn it down because the sounds be coming in too loud for me at least. So, but that's fine. That's something you could fix. What you can't fix is when it comes to one-shot samples. Let's say you had an 808 that came in like this. Like anything that came in like that, a snare, a vocal, there is no fixing that for several reasons. But for the most part, when it's like this, it's already clipping. It's going to have distortion. The dynamic is going to be crushed. And you can't really do anything with super crushed dynamics, especially if you have vocals. Like you can't do anything with that. So make sure your sounds are coming in healthy. That way you wouldn't have to really do too much. Sometimes I still like lower it if it's necessary, but for the most part, I rarely touch that until I get to another part that I'm going to um, show you when I'm starting to level out the mix. Now that we got that out the way, let's just talk about the plugin. Let's say you had an EQ like this for your clap, right? You said you wanted to make it like brighter and you want the low end to hit more. So then, you, you know, you play your clap. So... Most of us, we kind of mix when all the sounds are playing. So actually what I'm going to do is 
Let me reset all the knobs. All right. So now it's at a healthy level. So let's say you want it more high end to your clap and you want it more of a low end as well. So you put that EQ on, right? So now that you're hearing it louder, you're thinking that, you know, it sounds a lot better, but you didn't gain stage properly and you didn't EQ properly. And what I mean by you didn't EQ properly, because how are you supposed to AB something that is louder than your original sound? Look at the levels of your clap. So it's hitting around nine, right? But then when you added your plugins, it's hitting at six. So, you know, it's not clipping, but it's also not representing what you actually did. So you want to turn this back down to where is negative six. I mean, where is negative nine? Now you could A-B it. And obviously you want to spend, I want to EQ like that, but you could A-B and hear the difference. And that's how you're able to hear your compression. You're able to hear your reverb and you're able to really train your ears properly. When you're not doing that, when you're not gain staging within the plugin, then you're really sending yourself off. And this is why most of you guys can really hear compression or can hear what the, your EQ is doing. Two things when it comes to effects. Just make sure that you're not clipping when you boost in. If you're clipping while you're boosting, you're just, you're just boosting way too much. Like you should not be clipping at all when it comes to plugins. And if you are, turn it down, you know, with the actual levels of your EQ, not the output. And then you only turn down your output when, you know, if you boost it and then you match the levels and then you could properly A, B it. Now I show you pretty much all of the signal flows where you don't want to clip in. And now the beat is leveled. I'm gonna turn off that. And let's say you wanted to make a hit more. Now I'm messing with this pre-commuted effect. And remember, this is an effect. This is kind of like I'm distorting it. You feel me? So think of it as a limiter. There's a ceiling to this. And I'm just pushing my kick through this limiter right now. So if you wanted to hit harder, I would do it right after I level everything out. So now, you know, if it goes past negative nine, now I could do it like how I did it with the, the plugins. I could gain stage it like this. Instead of, you know, changing the knob from here, I could gain stage it like this, bring it back to the nine. And pretty much that's what I do with my drums, man. Like. I like how this, you know, you could kind of say it's a preamp in a sense. I mean, you know, people going to get mad or whatever. For me, I like to say it's kind of like a preamp, like when it hits that ceiling and it's like smushing, it adds more harmonics because it's being distorted in a sense. You know, and obviously I don't go crazy like this. This is obviously not sounding good in the mix, but to a point that does. Now I'm just, I don't really have to gain stage from here because I'm just gonna match all my levels to how hard this kick is hitting. That way your drums could all hit at a good level. Turn up a little. All right. I like the sound of that part, but let me just turn it back down to negative nine. Nice. 808. It's already good where it's at. But I could boost it a little. And then let's gauge it back down. Because remember, it's an effect. And there you go. That's how you properly gain stage. No more of getting making this stuff way too complicated. You just don't want to clip any part of your mix. 
And I'm gonna actually add a little analogy that I actually made in the other video, but I'm gonna just put it towards this video and then you're going to see what I mean to like clear up the understanding of gain staging. So here we go. So a good analogy that I just kind of came up with and hopefully this makes sense. Just imagine you have a group of friends, right? And you have loud friends at that. You know, we all have some loud friends. So you're meeting up with them and you're planning to go to the library, the mixer. And, you know, in the library is a quiet place. You can't be too loud, you know. So you're meeting up with your friends and your friends are the sounds. And you're just telling them like, hey, y'all loud. You feel me? I need y'all to be quiet when we go into the library. You know, when you're telling them to be quiet, you're initially just messing with their volumes and stuff. So now all your friends is going into the library now. And, you know, you told them to keep it down. So now everybody's keeping it down. They're not too loud. And, you know, that's good. But let's say you add a parametric. So that's like another friend coming along. You know, when friends meet more friends, we all get loud because we're excited and stuff. We got to make sure to tell our other friend like, hey, keep it down too. And the way you would do that is to turn them down from the output. So any plugin that you use, turn it down from the output so it can match the level of your friends. You feel me? Yeah, I know. That was pretty ill. <laughs> all right. So now that you got your other friends on board and y'all all staying quiet, then y'all can have a good time in the library. There's no trouble, meaning that it's a good quality mix and now when you guys are ready to leave you guys could be as loud as you want and initially you're going to be even louder outside now because all of your friends is with you and now that's how you have a great mix